Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today we will be diving into an action thriller movie titled, The Contractor. Enjoy the recap. The Contractor unfurls its tale with our protagonist, a man named James Harper. Harper isn't your ordinary man, he's cut from a different cloth, a member of the Army Special Military Forces. At home, he's a loving husband to his wife, Brianne, and a doting father to their eight-year-old son. Harper's life, however, has been far from easy. Recently, he's been on a long road to recovery, rehabilitating a knee severely injured in the unforgiving battlefield of war. But life, it seems, has more challenges in store for him. A call comes through, a summons from the military leaders. The news is far from what Harper would have hoped for. His service has been deemed complete, honorably discharged on medical grounds, but the sting in the tail, there's no severance pay waiting for him. They argue that all the money has been used for his medical treatment, leaving him without a financial safety net. A tough pill to swallow for Harper, who has given everything to the military. But in the face of such adversity, he's left with little choice but to move forward. He delivers the news to Brianne, his voice heavy with the burden of uncertainty. The job was gone and there was no severance pay. He's grappling with the stark reality of their situation. Scant savings, bills piling up and a family to support. Brianne, though, remains the beacon of hope. That night, as James busies himself patching up the roof, Brianne reveals another heart-wrenching blow. Mason, James's closest comrade from the military and a fellow victim of abrupt job loss, had tragically taken his own life. In the somber aftermath of Mason's funeral, James encounters a familiar face. Mike, a former superior from his special forces days, offers his condolences. They share a bond, both victims of the same unjust circumstance. Despite the years and distance, the camaraderie remains. Mike invites James to catch up over dinner. As evening unfurls, James makes his way to Mike's home, accepting the dinner invitation and an opportunity to reconnect. Over a hearty meal in the backdrop of a baseball game, they trade stories about their lives since their military days. Mike's path has taken him into the private sector, a job with a hefty paycheck that piques James's interest. With his current job hunt proving fruitless and bills threatening to drown him, James seizes the moment to ask Mike for a lifeline. The next day, Mike introduces James to his boss a man named Rusty. Rusty, it turns out, is a former soldier like James, but he chose a different path, building his own company. He doesn't sugarcoat the nature of the job for James, it's fraught with danger, high-risk missions are the norm. But in the face of mounting bills and a family to feed, James doesn't hesitate. He accepts the job and the risks that come with it. Rusty reassures James that his company operates within the confines of the law, receiving direct backing from the government. With that concern addressed, James is ready to dive into his new role. His first assignment, a few weeks in Berlin, keeping a close eye on a person of interest. When James breaks the news to Brienne about his new job, he doesn't reveal the risky details. He tells her about the good pay and the need to travel for a couple of weeks. Brienne, though reluctant, agrees. Next thing we know, James is jetting off to Berlin, settling into a hotel arranged by Mike. Soon after his arrival, he's visited by a woman named Katia, another one of Rusty's operatives. She sets the stage for his mission. To spy on a biological scientist named Salim, who's rumored to be in cahoots with terrorist organizations developing biological weapons. Armed with his mission and the necessary gear, James ventures into the Berlin night to start his surveillance. Days turn into nights as he documents Salim's every move, from his home to the lab where his ominous research takes place. After gathering a wealth of information he receives a new message from Katia. It's time to return to base. As he travels to headquarters, the tension rises. At HQ, James is met by Mike, Katia, and a new face, Bobby. The mission is laid bare. Salim is cooking up a biological weapon of lethal proportions, with the intention to sell it to dangerous terrorist groups. The mission is fraught with risk. The lab's security system is linked to the local police station, making stealth paramount. If things go south, they have a contingency, a mad dash through the forest and river tunnels. Armed with their plan and geared up, the team moves out under the cover of darkness. They descend on the location, silently taking out guards as they infiltrate the lab. They corner Salim, demanding his research data. As Bobby transfers the data, James is tasked with the grim duty of eliminating Salim. Salim pleads for his life, insisting that his work is intended to save lives, not destroy them. He begs James to safeguard a copy of his research data, locked away in a bank vault. But James is unmoved by Salim's pleas, and with a swift, lethal injection he ends Salim's life. After Salim's death is confirmed, James sets the lab aflame, staging the scene to resemble a tragic accident. Their exit, however, is blocked by the sudden arrival of the police, triggering a brutal shootout. The confrontation claims the lives of Katia and Bobby, and Mike sustains a gunshot wound to the leg. 
With their situation growing dire, James hoists Mike onto his shoulders and makes for the forest. Their goal, the safety of the river tunnel. After a grueling underwater journey they find a brief reprieve, allowing James to tend to Mike's injury. The situation is critical, requiring an immediate blood transfusion to stabilize Mike. With Mike's condition stabilized, they plan their return to base. But fate has other plans. James's old knee injury flares up, crippling him. He urges Mike to forge ahead, to deliver the data to Rusty. Mike is reluctant, but the mission must come first. He leaves James with instructions to head to a hotel called Salvina once he recovers, promising to come back for him. Hours later, James, having regained some mobility, makes his way to the Salvina Hotel. The echoes of gunfire still ringing in his ears, the weight of the mission ahead of him, he settles in to wait for Mike's return. In the hotel room, James discovers a passport, courtesy of Mike, and a note promising Mike's arrival in six hours. But as the hours tick by without any sign of Mike, a sense of unease creeps in. James decides it's time to leave. He dials up Rusty, inquiring about Mike. Rusty paints a grim picture, their mission has been compromised, the police are on their trail, and Mike never returned with the data. Rusty assumes the worst, that Mike is dead. He orders James to reveal his location so he can dispatch a team to retrieve him. But as James spots Rusty's men, a chill runs down his spine. An instinct tells him not to trust Rusty, that he might have had a hand in Mike's fate. He decides to take his chances and go in the opposite direction. His gut feeling pays off. As soon as James disappears from sight, an enraged Rusty orders his men to hunt him down and eliminate him. As the sound of gunfire shatters the silence, James springs into action, ducking and weaving to evade Rusty's men. He finds refuge under a bridge, where he manages to take down two of Rusty's henchmen. In their final moments, they confirm James's suspicion, Rusty had sent them to kill him. Thinking on his feet, James sends a message to Rusty from one of the men's cell phones, leading Rusty to believe he's dead. Exhausted from the chase, he finds a brief respite in an underground station, his mind racing with his next move. Then it hits him. Salim's words about a copy of his research data hidden in a bank vault. His next destination becomes clear, Salim's house. The following day, James confronts Salim's wife, demanding access to the bank vault. Initially, she resists, but under the threat of harm to her son, she relents, leading James to the vault. The coveted data finally in his hands, James dives into its contents. As he sifts through the information he's taken aback, Salim was just a regular scientist. The realization hits James like a ton of bricks, and he's left grappling with the gravity of his actions and the unpredictable road that lies ahead. Salim, it turns out, was on a mission of his own, developing a vaccine to combat a deadly global virus. His intention was to freely distribute this life-saving vaccine, but others coveted his formula for their selfish gain. With this revelation, James decides to head back to America, using the passport Mike had provided earlier. Once there, he heads straight to Mike's house to deliver the grim news of Mike's supposed death. But in a shocking turn of events, Mike is alive. James is left reeling, suspecting a conspiracy between Mike and Rusty to have him killed. His mind buzzing with suspicion, James tails Mike the next morning to uncover his true intentions. However, Mike proves to be sharper than anticipated. Sensing he's being followed, he confronts his pursuer, only to find James. He's taken aback, having been told by Rusty that James was dead. The tension hangs in the air as two old friends face each other, Mike explains that he was unaware of James's survival, which is why he left him at the hotel and returned to America alone. He insists that he never intended to betray James, pointing the finger squarely at Rusty for playing them both. This revelation doesn't absolve Mike entirely in James's eyes, he's still furious that Mike lied about the mission's true objective and Salim's research. Mike warns James not to go back home, fearing Rusty would endanger his family if he discovers James is alive. Armed with this knowledge, James resolves to take out Rusty and his men once and for all. Mike, feeling a sense of guilt over the whole ordeal, offers to assist James in the daunting task of taking down Rusty's operation. As dusk falls they put their plan into action. Mike plays the role of the unsuspecting visitor, killing the guards as James comes out of the boot. Bullets fly and bodies fall as James and Mike take on Rusty's men. James runs inside the house as Mike and Rusty have a one versus one. James finds multiple assailants inside the house but he takes them out one at a time. Unfortunately, Mike is shot and injured, but in a last attempt he also manages to hit Rusty. Without a word, James walks over to Rusty and delivers a fatal shot to the chest. Immediately, James races against time to get Mike to the hospital, but it's a battle he can't win. Mike succumbs to his injuries and dies leaving James alone once again. The next day, James sets the car ablaze, reducing it to ashes and returning back to his life. At long last he returns home back to his family. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.